Hi, this is Mrs. Yowd, and today I'm going to teach you Chapter 9, Lesson 2, and this is Solving Quadratic Equations by Graphing. And if you're following along in your journal, I'm skipping pages 281 through 283 because I think you can do those on your own. So we're going to start with the practice exercises on page 284. So on this first set of problems, they want us to solve the equation by graphing. So that means on number one, I'm going to think about this as an equation to graph y equals x squared plus 4x. So you know several ways to graph by now. What I always like to do first is see if I can factor out the problem. And if I can, then that will help me find my zeros and then my axis of symmetry and then my vertex. So in this case, I can factor it. So I can take out an x, which leaves us x plus 4. So that means that my zeros are 0 and negative 4. So if I graph that, I have a 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, I have a negative 4 here. So that means that my axis of symmetry is right in the middle at negative 2. Okay, so now I can find my vertex. And my vertex is going to be that negative 2, and then I need to plug that into the equation to find out what the other part of my vertex is. So we have negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2, which gives us negative 4. So negative 2 comma negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 down here is my vertex. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and put all these points together in a nice uh, U-shape parabola. And so now we need to look and see what the question is asking. The question is asking us to solve this problem. So when is x squared plus 4x equal to 0? Well, we can see that the, it is equal to 0 at this spot here and this spot here. So that means that my answer is x is equal to negative 4 and 0. For number two, I need to think about it as an equation and also get everything on one side. So y is equal to positive x squared minus 2x plus 1. So first I want to decide, can I factor this? So here we have x and x and two minus signs. The only thing that multiplies to 1 is 1 and 1, and that does indeed uh, work with the negative 2 there. So that means that my zero of this equation is positive one. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Okay, since I only have one zero, that means that it's also where my axis of symmetry is. And so that means that my vertex has to be uh, that same exact point. Okay, now if I take a look at my original equation, I notice that I have a plus one here, which means that's going to be where my y-intercept is. So I can go ahead and put in those two points and draw my parabola. All right, so now we're going to look and see what the question is asking. The question is asking, what is the answer to this? So my answer to that is where it crosses the x-axis, which is at that point there. So that means that I can say that my answer is x equals positive 1. And it only has one answer this time because it comes down and touches that x-axis and goes right back up. It does not have two answers like number 1. All right, number three, we're going to change this into an equation to graph. And now let's see if we can factor this. We have x and x. We're going to have plus and plus. And some multiples of four. Well, we can have four and one or uh, two and two. None of those add up to this in the middle here. So that means that it cannot be factored. All right, so then we've got to move, move on to a different way of graphing. So a different way of graphing, remember, is to find the axis of symmetry by using the formula negative b over 2a. I covered this in a previous lesson. So in our equation, we have a equal to 1, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 4. So I'm going to plug those numbers in that I have. So negative b would be negative 2 over 2 times a, which is 1, and then I get negative 1 as an answer. So that means that I know that my axis of symmetry is at negative 1. Okay, so I also know that this, this problem here has a plus 4 at my y-intercept, 
So I can go up one, two, three, four, and put a point there and a point over here. And lastly, I can find my vertex by plugging in the axis of symmetry, which is negative one. So that would be negative one squared plus two times negative one plus four, which gives me three, so that I know that my vertex is negative one comma three. Okay, so here is my graph, my parabola. And the question, remember, let's look back up at the question. The question is asking, when is this true? When does this equation equal zero? Well, here's my x-axis. Here's where the zeros would be. Notice that it's not touching that x-axis at all, which means that the answer is x has no solution. Okay, so let's move on to the next couple of problems here. Number four, let's see first if we can factor this. So y equals that, so we'll have x and x two minus signs, and four and one does work because that does add up to five in the middle. So that means that my zeros are positive one and positive four. So now we know what our axis of symmetry is. It is positive two and one half. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 2.5. Okay, so now we can plug in our axis of symmetry number, 2.5 comma something, in order to find my vertex. So my vertex would be then 2.5 squared minus 5 times 2.5 plus 4, which equals negative 2.25. So I know that my vertex is right about there. From the original equation, I can see that my y-intercept is up at positive 4, so I can go ahead and put that there, and on the other side as well. Okay, so now I'm ready to draw my parabola, and we can see where the zeros are. The zeros are where it crosses the x-axis, so that means my answer is that the zeros are at positive 1 and positive 4. Now, some of you at this point are prob probably thinking, why are we going through the bother of graphing them when we can find the answer right here? And you're absolutely right. You certainly can. The reason why we're going through it this way is because sometimes there is no solution like there was in number three. And so it's helpful for us to understand the concept of graphing and how it relates to what those zeros are. And so this lesson is just helping you re-emphasize that fact. Okay, at this point I'd like you to pause the video. I want you to try five through nine on your own and see how you do. Go ahead and practice graphing them even though you don't have to because that's something that you're going to need to know and find out what the zeros are through that graph. Turn it back on when you're done and check your answers. Okay, this is what I got for the rest of my problems. Go ahead and pause the video and double check and make sure you got it right. If you did not get it right, then see if you can find your mistakes. Numbers 10 through 15 on the next page are asking us to find the zeros and notice that it's already graphed for us. So that makes it pretty easy for us to find the answers. On number 10, we know that the answer has to be these three points. So that means that my zeros are 0, 1, and 2. Now I can double check my answer if I want to by plugging those numbers back into the original problem. So let's plug in 0 and see what we get. So if we plug in 0, we're going to get 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 0, which does indeed equal 0, so that one works. Let's plug in 1. So we have 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 1, which also works because that second piece equals 0. Let's plug in 2. We get 2 minus 2 and 4 minus 2, which also works because 2 minus 2 is 0. So that's how we can check our answers by plugging it back in. Let's take a look at number 11. Number 11 has the answer of negative 2 and positive one. And so my zeros are negative two and positive one. 
go ahead and pause the video and try numbers 12 through 15 on your own and see what you get. Okay, check your answers and see how you did. If you got any wrong, see if you can find your mistakes. In numbers 16 through 18, we need to approximate the zeros to the nearest tenth. So if I look here, I can see that one of my zeros is in between 0 and 1, and I can see that the other 0 is in between 2 and 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in some numbers and see if I can find something that's really close to 0. So since I'm uh, between 0 and 1 on that first one and it's even closer to 0, I'm going to start with 0 0.3 and then I'll do a 0 0.4 and then I'll do a 0 0.5 and see what I get when I plug them in. So what I mean by plugging them in is I'm going to plug it into the original equation. So 0 0.3 squared minus 3 times 0 0.3 plus 1 etc. and then plug in 0 0.4 and plug in 0 0.5. When I plug in 0 0.3 using my calculator I get 0 0.19. When I plug in 0 0.4 with my calculator I get negative 0 0.04 and when I plug in 0 0.5 with my calculator I get negative 0 0.25. Okay so when I look at this I notice that um, the 0 0.4 is the closest out of those three to 0, and so um, because it gives me an output of z negative 0 0.04, that's really, really close to 0, so that is my first approximation. So now I'm going to do the same thing with my numbers between 2 and 3. So I've chosen to plug in 2.5, and when I do that, I get negative 0 0.25. When I plug in 2.6, I get negative 0 0.04. And when I plug in 2.7, I get positive 0 0.19. So this is uh, my one that's the closest to 0 is the 2.6. So now if we're going to approximate the zeros to the nearest tenth, I can say that the answer would be that the zeros approximate 0 0.4 and 2.6 because those are the ones that got really really close to zero once I plugged in some numbers to help me out. Alright let's take a look at number 17. Number 17 I see that one of my zeros is here that is in between negative 1 and negative 2 and then my other zero is here and that is in between 2 and 3. So we just need to plug in some numbers and see if we can get something really close to zero. Okay, those are the ones that I chose to plug in. And as you can see, after I plugged them in, I can see that negative 1.3 and positive 2.3 are really, really close to zero. And so those are my answers. My zeros are approximately negative 1.3 and 2.3. Okay, why don't you try number 18 on your own, pause the video, and then turn it back on to see what you got. Okay, so I got the zeros are approximately negative 5.7 and negative 2.3. This concludes today's lesson on chapter 9, lesson 2, which is finding out what the zeros are by graphing quadratic equations.